Hey, what's going on YouTube? That's it, TZ here. Just want to do a video on the PWS uh, gas system. I've actually broken it down for you guys so that you can see uh, actually what's going on in, in the internals inside of this rifle. So uh, bear with me. I am holding the camera and using one hand. So uh, hopefully this video turns out good and has some good information in it for you guys that are interested in uh, primary weapon systems. So what I'll do is I'll start out with the uh, lower receiver here. And there's not much to the lower receiver receiver other than the enhanced buffer tube. Um, you can run any upper receiver group on this lower receiver. So if I wanted to take my uh, BCM uh, 11 and a half inch upper and run it on here, I could just fine um, and, and would have no issues. Um, so... What I, what I will show you guys is the enhanced buffer tube and and the and the weight and spring that come with it. Uh, so once you get into it, you'll notice that this rifle has um, an extended lip, or the the enhanced buffer tube has an extended lip on there. Let's see if I can get it to focus in, and it doesn't want to focus. But um, what you can see there is is that extended lip there and, and this basically helps again against any tilt that may occur in the bolt carrier group as the rifle is functioning um, it's just an added feature it's not a necessity uh, because of the way the bolt and the bolt carrier group is uh, designed uh, with the long op rod you shouldn't have any issues with tilt i haven't had any um, and that's definitely not due to the lip, but due to the bolt carrier group and how it's designed itself. Uh, but <clears throat> we'll look at the enhanced tube here, and you'll notice that this system does not have your traditional castle nut, but is held in place by uh, three screws. There's two small Allen screws up top, and then one large one at the bottom. Um, and that just helps with any uh, rotation, or it uh, keeps the tube from rotating or anything like that holds it into place real nice and stiff and it's not going to move you also have uh, some limited uh, rotation quick detach points so uh, what I what I have is a Magpul MS4 sling that I use with this rifle and simply attach it to that spot right there and you can go from there uh, the tube itself is actually uh, fluted and this helps channel out any debris or anything like that, dirt debris that may get in there and keep it from actually moving forward or back or however you please. The tube also has uh, more holes drilled into the bottom to um, uh, disperse water if, if you're that type of person where you're in a water environment. This will help out with that. Um, draining the water so that you don't have any issues with water in the tube or whatnot and, and that's pretty much it there there's not a whole lot um, to say about the lower receiver other than the enhanced buffer tube and, and how awesome it is um, I think I might actually change this out on my uh, BC or my SBR and add this this system to it because I like it so much um, and moving up forward or moving more into the rifle we'll get into the heart and soul of the PWS which is the long stroke gas system or the uh, piston system excuse me and you'll notice that it is uh, different than a lot of your traditional gas piston rifles in that it has the uh, long op rod attached to the bolt carrier uh, the bolt carrier also has um, some some differences to it and this is uh, proprietary to the upper receiver. Um, I would not run a different or regular gas impingement um, bolt carrier group in the system because it will not work. Uh, but the back is weighted, so you can see the, the extra mass on the back end there. And that simply helps uh, delay the unlock and also helps with the feeding process. So as the gun fires, this actually... That weight on the back helps slow the process down enough that the rifle will cycle properly and as it's coming forward it has enough mass to feed the next round. Um, 
and that and that's pretty much it you also see that there are some some, some grooves there and that's just to help uh, uh, with the feeding process the contact points are, are, are limited uh, on the surface uh, <clears throat> typically what I do is I run my DI gun super wet so it's coated in frog lube uh, and it it works best when it's warm uh, with this system I only run a very small amount of the uh, liquid frog lube on the contact points and, and that's pretty much you don't want to uh, gop this down with the paste or anything like that simply because there's no heat transfer in here so if you put a lot of that paste on there it could actually um, cause malfunctions uh, because it's not gonna slick up like uh, your regular direct impingement uh, system because of the heat being transferred to the bulk carrier group you're not going to see it with the PWS so there's really no need for it um, just run it on the contact points just a little bit of lube on the contact points and you should be good to go you also notice the the long op rod there and uh, one of the cool things about this is that the piston itself and I'll show you guys this is the actual piston it connects to the front here um, and I'm not going to, I won't show you guys that, but basically what you do is you have that open groove there, it slides into place, and then you turn it, and that locks it into place. And once you put it in the rifle, it's not going to go anywhere, uh, and it's not going to move. But what you have happening is a gas to metal impingement. So as the gas is traveling, cycling down the barrel through the gas port and, and through uh, the the uh, adjustment system up front it is gas actually hitting the metal and then pushing the entire system back so this entire system is actually moving back where in your traditional gas piston rifles uh, for instance like an LWRC or your Ruger 556 or something like that what you have is gas hitting an op rod pushing the op rod which then strikes your um, bolt carrier group and that pushes it back. And that's where you get some issues with the tilt because of an off axis uh, alignment. Sometimes with those systems, the, uh, uh, the, the actual op rod is a little bit higher. So it pushes down on the bolt carrier group and that's where you get the tilt from. With this system, you don't have that. So everything's moving straight back. You don't have to worry about carrier tilt or anything like that. And that's not to knock LWRC or Ruger or anything like that. I have very limited experience with those, and, and the experience that I do have with them is good. But it has happened in those systems before, and, and that's not to say a bad thing because, you know, those guys, most gas piston rifles today don't have that issue. A lot of uh, manufacturers have fixed the problem of carrier tilt. So those are great systems to buy as well. Um, and we'll look at the bolt itself here and you'll notice that it doesn't have any gas rings or anything like that um, and because this is a gas piston system it does not need the uh, gas rings you have a spring here which helps with the feeding process as well and that uh, slides into your bolt carrier and uh, simply functions pretty much the same way as your uh, standard DI bolt except that you don't have the heat being transferred or the gas is being transferred back into the system and they need to be vented properly you don't have that issue or you don't have um, that's not the type of uh, system this is so you don't need that um, and, and everything else is the same you have your firing pin you got your retaining pin here and then your cam pin and, and, and that's the same but if you wanted to you could switch these out with different DI bolt carrier groups or whatever and have no issue. Uh, with the locking system here, this just simply allows you to change out your charging handle. So the charging ha handle simply sits over the top like that. You can slide that back and then you're good to go. Um, in previous and earlier versions of the PWS, this was actually held in by a pin that had to be punched out. So with this, it's really quick. You just turn it, pull it off, switch it out, put it back on, turn it, and lock it into place. You're good to go. Um, so we'll move to the upper receiver now. And I'll 
turn it over here so you guys can see. The PWS system comes with uh, four gas settings. And what I have it in now so you guys can see is the first setting, which is a one dot setting. Oops, sorry about that. Which is a one dot setting. And it might be a little hard to see because I'm losing light here. Uh, but you'll notice that there are some small hole, hole ports there. And what you can do is using the gas adjustment tool that comes with the PWS, you can actually change that out. So uh, the first setting is for just running the gun unsuppressed. You can use uh, any type of ammunition or anything like that uh, with no problem. And if you turn the system, so we'll turn it, simply take this adjustment tool here and you'll notice that it also comes with a front, a front side adjustment tool on the other side. And with PWS rifles, they come with uh, Magpul Embus sights and what I have on my rifle when I switch them out is the uh, Knight's Armament Micro System. So the front sight and the rear sight. You actually don't need that because it has the adjustment. It has a quick adjustment right there up front so you don't need to use this tool. Uh, but to adjust the gas you will need this side. Um, so what you can do is just put it in the hole there and turn it and now you'll see that it's switched to the two dot setting and the two dot setting is running suppressed with uh, lower powered rounds for like 55 grain or something like that. Um, now what I've noticed is, is that I can actually run this rifle with 55 grain ammo on the four dot setting. Um, so I haven't had an issue with it. It runs very smooth and uh, clean. So you can see there, you've got your two dot setting. And there is a little carbon buildup right there at the front. So it might be a little hard to see, but there is uh, two dots. And once again, please forgive me, I am running out of light. It's about uh, almost 7.30 here, so it might be a little bit harder to see. Um, and we'll adjust it again. So you simply take it, put it in. And now this is your three dot setting. And this is for uh, unsuppressed military loads. So if you're running uh, 62 grain or higher or something like that, green tip ammunition, this is uh, the setting for that. And then if you turn it again, you have your four dot setting and this is for running hotter loads suppressed. Uh, so, and like I said, I've, I'm able to run 55 grain ammunition on, on this setting and it makes the gun really, really flat shooting uh, uh, with my AAC Mini 4 suppressor. So this is the, the setting that I like to run it on. And then last but not least, you have an X setting. And this is for cleaning this actual adjustment uh, knob. So <clears throat> a lot of people were led to believe that this actually turns the gas off. That is not the case. You do not want to shoot the gun in this X setting. It will damage your adjustment head here. Um, so if you turn it a little bit more, it will pop out. And you'll see now that the head is out and you can actually clean that system. Um, and you really don't need to clean it. They, they say probably once a year is, is really all you need to do to uh, clean it. You'll notice I haven't cleaned it. Clean it. And I've run about uh, 500 rounds through this, through this gun. So um, you definitely do not want to run this gun in the X setting because it will damage the system and uh, you'll have to send it in for repair. Uh, so that's pretty much it guys. Um, I hope you enjoy the video. It, uh, the PWS rifle is, is, is a great system. Um, gets a lot of its DNA from the AK-47. Uh, if you guys notice that the, the actual uh, head here looks a lot like the, the piston head on an AK-47. Um, and, and it runs smooth, runs very clean. Uh, a couple of uh, notes, um, if you run uh, uh, this gun suppressed, you will get carbon fouling in the receiver. Not a whole lot. It's going to resemble what you would get in a uh, standard DI gun unsuppressed. So uh, basically, 
running it suppressed is like running a DI gun unsuppressed. Uh, when you run this gun unsuppressed, there's hardly any fouling at all. Um, there's no heat transfer to the bolt carrier group. I've shot it a couple times and then taken my hand and actually touched the bolt carrier group and it was um, room temperature. Uh, there's absolutely no heat transfer. So a very, very cool system. Um, and I encourage you guys, if you're in the market for a gas piston rifle, and you want something a little different than your traditional gas piston rifle to take a look at the uh, PWS system. Um, and, and, and that's pretty much it. I'll cover a few upgrades that I made to this rifle and then I'll let you guys go. Uh, but I put on the Noveski rail panels. Uh, I actually uh, don't really care for the hand stop too much. Um, just simply the way my hands are. I think what I'm going to do is get the uh, BCM key mod vert grip. And, and put that on here instead. I uh, also went with the uh, Haley Strategic Thorntail Mount for the uh, Scout Light and their key mod system. Uh, what I did have on here was my old gear sector with the Picatinny rail section added on and that actually added some weight to the front end of the rifle so I added this and to help kind of cut down on that and then uh, last but not least I added a uh, B5 uh, mil spec stop so um, that's about it this rifle comes with the uh, um, not the I think it's the uh, the CTR stop um, comes with that the uh, mil spec version uh, without the uh, locking mechanism so uh, I really like the B5 systems a little bit better than the CTR uh, for this rifle so uh, once again, guys, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.